So let us start this session. Uh, a very good evening to all of you. And today, uh, this is the first session on ecological economic, that is course MSD014. Uh, till now, we have completed uh, the three basic uh, courses. Uh, that is the one of the two important uh, pillars, dimension of sustainable development. First, we talk about uh, that sustainability science is basic principle followed by we were uh, I mean, learning about ecosystem and natural resources as a basic pillars. We have learned about some of the basic concept on that eco, uh, ecosystem and biodiversity conservation, natural resources, how we are extracting it, the need for proper management of all those resources uh, if we are planning or if we are looking towards achieving sustainable development or development goals or to maintain the sustainability of the resources. And the third course we do, uh, we learn about the basic concept of uh, sociocultural uh, system, which is the drivers to, uh, uh, which is drivers of who are the beneficiary of this particular uh, ecosystem and natural resources. Now, in this uh, course four, you know, when we are talking about the uh, relation between the interaction between nature and the society, uh, this interaction of nature and the society is bridged uh, with the medium economics. So we need to understand the economic, how economic is bridging this the concept of sustainability when we try to understand relation of nature and society, who is, is the, I mean, the beginning of uh, running, uh, which, is the, which is the beginning of, which is the uh, main uh, cause of resource degradation or threats to uh, that sustainability. So in course four, uh, we are going to uh, look into four important blocks, means the course of ecological economics, I mean, it is a basic, I mean, it is not, we are not going to look into the that uh, vast area I means different uh, concept and theories of ecological economics. But here we are going to look into the basic principle and approaches the methodology of ecological economics, which is uh, spread over uh, 16 units of four blocks. The first block, in the first block, we are going to look on the relation between ecology, environment, and sustainability. And it will be followed by second block that is on the resource and economy, how resource and economy are related and the different theories on economic theories on different resources. Then third block, we are going to look into how the pressure of economic growth is tied to uh, uh, that different environmental and ecosystem of India. So we look that uh, under the um, under the block or environmental issues in India from that is not an in a general perspective that will be looked from the economic point of view right the fourth one the last block of this course that will be talk on, on valuation and appraising of natural resources so this is about the block about uh, uh, the fourth uh, block of this course which we are going to learn in another one uh, month. So today in the, this first session, what we need to understand is, as you know, the first course, uh, the first block of this course in ecology, environment, and sustainability. So we have understand the concept of sustainability from the point of, you know, uh, that environment and dimension and from, from the point of social dimension. And we took those dimension and we discuss those dimension from an integrative holistic approach without an understanding, without an understanding of uh, the principle of economics. So today we'll look that from economic dimension of sustainability. So in this session, what I'm trying to, I mean, touch upon is, as you know, uh, the major uh, that uh, broad area is in the understanding ecological economics, sustainable development. We are, we are going to look into uh, how ecological, uh, how economics look the sustainability. You know, uh, when you look into uh, here and that, so 
uh, here in this session, what we are going to understand is that economic approaches to the concept of sustainability from two uh, major approaches. One is on neoclassical environment and economics, how they look, the concept of sustainability and uh, ecological economics, uh, how they look uh, or how they are trying to uh, Im uh, effectively implement the principle of ecological economics in understanding or in application of different uh, that uh, development uh, that uh, approaches the models uh, for sustainability. As we know that the growth of world population uh, and uh, uh, world population and uh, because of that to fulfill the DJ or to fulfill the need of uh, to fulfill uh, the need of that uh, growth of human civilization, growth of population, uh, we are growing our economic activities. And that gives, especially under post-industrialization, uh, we are evidence with the rapid growth of economic activities. When we talk about the growth of population, uh, which is followed by rapid growth of economic activities, uh, to fulfill human desire and uh, to fulfill, uh, to make ourselves uh, more happy uh, than that have uh, that the consequences or that affect the impact of those uh, rapid growth of economy is the environmental stress in different way. Like, you know, <coughs> the, <coughs> sorry, and uh, uh, this uh, climate change, the global crisis of climate change and ozone depletion, acid rain, loss of biodiversity, air pollution, and uh, depletion of different resources. This, you know, this is a, the symptom of environment stresses, which we're going, going, we are talking from the last four or five decades, especially from 1970s onward. We have talked different, uh, on, uh, of these different issues at different sessions. Then, when we talk about economic growth, you know, when you are talking about economics, because as I told you, as you know that uh, the, the pillars, uh, the dimension of when we talk about sustainability or sustainable development, development is also to maintain the sustainability development also require. In that, we have to understand uh, Nature society interaction, this nature society interaction is through the medium of economy. So the point is how economic looks, the growth of economy activity. Right. So when we talk about uh, growth of economics, it is about uh, in one side, when we say we interpret the interaction of nature and societies and economic activities, in other side, uh, to solve our existence then economic activities is important. So what is economic growth? What is economic? If you look from the point of neoclassical economics, it is the production of resources. And uh, it's, you know, after production, what we did, uh, then we deliver those products and are consumed by different consumers, uh, that uh, different uh, stakeholders. And it's a cycle, but from the new, new classical economics, all that, that whatever uh, you are selling as a product from that selling uh, that whatever the goods and services, they are taken as a closed system. They never look this that is related to environment or related to the, uh, that ecological phenomenon, ecological value. So from their point of view, it is a closed system, the production mechanism, that uh, that is uh, in, for example, if you take in farm level, they sell goods and the services, and uh, the prices, the price of that uh, that uh, that particular product, they calculate calculate those uh, uh, by using the uh, then the, the value of the remuneration of other different production factors like land, labor, and capital, right? So the point is that what they are looking is, it is a closed system of bringing, selling the goods and services, then remunerate them, the production processes in 
that is land, labor, and capital in the form uh, through uh, uh, monetary value. But luckily, you know, uh, some of the classical economists, uh, classical economists, especially, you know, uh, that Malthus you are talking, you know about the Mal Malthus, we already talk about different principle and hypothesis which is proposed by him and Ricardo, Mill and Marx, they're, they're very clear in their mind that when you talk about the production and the process of production, it is uh, this, uh, uh, as, a, uh, I mean, as a process of economic activity, now it is bounded by the environmental factor. Means what is the product, what is the product that, uh, that is at the product of the environment, right? So, environment. So, when this kind of understanding it is totally neglected, totally complete, or completely or for good, this important characteristic of the real world econom economies by the new neoclassical economy. Because their understanding was that um, it is a closed cycle. There is no relation with that of the environment and quality. And they do not, uh, they do not uh, talk about uh, a role of environment in that. But you know, uh, uh, then uh, in 1970s onward, then there is a discussion debate on uh, how we have to understand the sustainability, how to we understand the interaction between nature and society, and uh, uh, whatever you are theoretically talking about the production process as a closed system, then uh, we, when you put that environment is one of the important uh, uh, that uh, assets of that uh, part of that process of production, then it has it should be considered as an uh, open system in order to function. Because in order to function that economy, we extract resources from the environment, and that then we dispose of large amount of um, amount of uh, that uh, waste as a byproduct of the product we use to into the environment. So it should be taken as a open system. That is the uh, that is how the uh, other classical economies like Melters, Mill, and Marx they proposed and that is their understanding that especially it was happened in 70s and 90s. So if you really look into the role of environment when we are talking about uh, the role of environment in this uh, economic uh, what uh, that Melters and the others are proposing is that because environment is uh, giving that you're, uh, we are extracting the resources from the environment so the life support function of the ecosystem needs to be understand. So it should be kind of, it is well connected to their physical, chemical, and biological role in overall system, including the, the production process of economy. So from that, we can have a look into the basic foundation of the ecosystem that can be divided into three categories when we're talking about a process of economic growth, economic production. One is natural environment, which is, you know, natural environment, which is uh, powered by the solar energy, like, you know, oceans, wetland, rainforest. Then the other is then domesticated environment, which we use that uh, main subsidized solar power ecosystem. That, that means managed by, directly managed by uh, that uh, human, like agricultural land, aquaculture, woodland, etc. And I know, the other is what we are talking about the cities, industrial areas that's called a fabricated environment that is powered by urban industrial system that is full power, full power. You no, know, like, you know, we are using uh, that, uh, that, pet, uh, that uh, the others uh, that um, uh, petroleum production and the power production and so on to develop that fabricated environment. So, so point is that when we are, you are trying to understand and the concept of that the economic growth. And uh, when you economic growth or economic development from your core system to open system, as we know that environment we extract and uh, which was forward by neoclassical economies, then the neoclassical economy, then when you consider that the environment as a part of 
or when you appreciate the role of environment, which is uh, the uh, which is uh, which give us resources in that we have to understand the ecosystem in uh, these three important categories or three important understanding uh, categories of understanding, right? So it is also known, uh, we know that when we talk about the a third category of the environment that is fabricated environment, they are not self-supporting self, uh, self, uh, or self-maintaining because they are run by from the other sources. Like we are talking about that petrochemical industry, we are talking about other energy sources, right? So to be sustained, they are dependent on solar power, natural and domesticated environment. Because when we are talking about our cities, when we're talking about the industry, they depends on the other life supporting ecosystem. They cannot, I mean, uh, sustain without the support of those two component of the environment. So automatically, and because of the pressure to the, uh, uh, that the environment uh, in the process of economic growth, the phenomenon, the stage is also caused. Because when you have disposed uh, waste or pollutant that negatively affect us, uh, that recycling, naturally recycling process, feedback, lo uh, feedback loops and the control mechanism in the life supporting ecosystem. So that directly impact to the production and maintenance of environmental goods, which we are talking about that is, that have uh, that self, uh, that uh, maintaining system. So from when we understand those different, you know, uh, that uh, issues of that thing, uh, particularly fabricated environment, uh, that which is not possible to, I mean, self uh, support or self maintaining. But if you really look into the growth of uh, that economic growth, uh, most of economic growth happen in that area of fabricated environment. So to maintain that fabricated environment, to make it exist, we depend on other two component that is that, uh, uh, that uh, human many is a system and other is natural system, right? So after understanding this awareness of actual and the potential uh, that conflicts between economic and the, uh, the environment, the point here, what it is reflecting is that what economists we are understanding and what is happening actually, because if you want to run the economy uh, for a long, uh, to sustain a longer uh, longer term, what we discuss in these three important uh, component that um, when you understand theoretically, you say that it is. Uh, we say uh, we assume that it is not. It is a closed system. We can run the economy without understanding, uh, without maintaining the quality of the environment. But if you look into the reality, then it is not possible. So there is a Louis. I mean, conflicts of understanding between economic growth and environment. That's why from 1970s onward, when we realized that those environment and degradation, environment and pollution, its impact is, I mean, uh, circular around these uh, uh, that the three important components, what we are talking today, then, uh, then we realized that we need to follow some of the specific approach of development that's why that is how the concept of sustainable development was started, right? Then, what is, uh, what is sustainable development? When you talk about development, you know, traditionally, uh, when you talk about development of a country, of a region, we talk about gross national product. And it is, uh, this GNP is considered as a best performance indicator for measuring national economy in the welfare. But the point is that if there is a depletion degradation of natural resources are happening, and uh, if you look that, then, then the economic trends will may be in opposite direction. Means there is a direct impact in GNP. So in environment terms, what we can say that GNP measure is plainly defect, plainly you can say it is a defective term. When you see, uh, say that GNP is an indicator to national economy and welfare, it is, you know, we cannot consider it as an ecologist, right? The reason is, you know, when you talk about gross national product, if you, uh, 
look into that parameters, you will find out that there is no account and no account is taken of environmental destruction or degradation. That's why when we talk about when they're selling a product, when you are talking about that particular, that new classical economies, when they talk about that, uh, when pricing of some product is uh, calculated and they tag it as a closed ecosystem, when you calculate closed ecosystem, no, no, doesn't talk about the impact of that product in, uh, in terms of environmental degradation or environmental pollution. The other is, uh, you know, that shows that the value of natural resources are zero. There is no value. That's why when they calculate or uh, uh, they do the pricing of their product, they do not consider that component of environment, means impact and whatever the uh, value given by the environment. So uh, that shows that there is not a repair remedial expenditure so, uh, like you know pollution control, pollution abatement uh, measures and the healthcare system or a health impact because of that, uh, that uh, process of economic growth is not calculated. So in under ZNP. So if we look that development from economic point of view, that development means the set of genes in the economy uh, that's economical, social, institutional, and the political structure needed to implement the transition from a pre-capitalistic economic base on agriculture to an industrial capitalistic economy. You should understand this different word from a pre-capitalist uh, capitalistic economy based on agriculture to an industrial capitalistic economy. So this is the definition of development by economics, right? So, so if you look into such definition of development, two main characteristic is here. First is, you know, the changes needed are not only quantitative, GNP growth, but qualitative too, in social institution and political. And uh, the only possible model for development is that of Western industrialized country. Means this implies that the concept of development is viewed as a process of cultural fusion towards the best knowledge, best set values, the best organization, the best set of technology. What it is indicate? This indicate that when you are talking in this one side, you are talking about social institution, institution and the political changes is needed to have a development in the other side, at the same time you are talking about mm -hmm. that uh, repeating the same growth, uh, the, uh, that the way of development process, what Western industri industrialized countries is doing, right? And that's talk that is talking about cultural and uh, using the knowledge. Please. So, uh, so then it's talking about base set of values that is, we have to borrow from the Western country, the base organization is structured from there. So, and uh, it's also talking about set of technology, base set of technology. So this is the meaning of development, what economics uh, that uh, they define, right? Then again, if you look into uh, if you look into the concept when 1980s, uh, when we are talking about sustainability and sustainable development, uh, before that, uh, the issues when uh, when we discuss about the sustainability concept, uh, there was some imp uh, one important concept which was proposed by Delhi, Herman Delhi, in that we talk about zero growth concept. So here, when you talk about sustainable development, we cannot uh, I mean, sorry. Until we cannot say that there should be no growth or zero growth, this idea cannot be set in economic growth, uh, growth and environment preservation. Right? It is not possible. That's why there was sub, uh, that uh, opposition in 1970, 1980s, beginning of 1980s, when we started to, uh, to, to talk about uh, paradigm shift, need for paradigm shift uh, of the way of economic growth. Uh, so when we look towards the uh, uh, development. So rather, you know, sustainable development carries the ideal of a harmonization of simultaneous realization of economic growth and environmental condition, right? So when you talk about the zero growth, if you stop the zero growth, means there is no economic growth. If there is no economic growth, 
dan and uh, then environment and concern if you're looking only the environment and concern then there will not there will be no growth and if there is no growth it may not be possible to concern from the environment also that is also one the point so then uh, that's why one of the author, uh, author Barbier writes that sustainable development implies right in the same time when World Commission on Environment Development, uh, they published uh, the report or common feature in the same time in that time, uh, he uh, writes that sustainable development implies to maximize simultaneously the biological goals that we are talking about, that genetic diversity, resilience, uh, and then what we have talked in when we are talking about ecosystem biodiversity, that, uh, that uh, ecosystem value. Then economic system goals, then because economic system goals, what are that? Satisfaction of basic needs, enhancement of equity, increasing useful goods and services, and the social system goals, cultural diversity, institution, institutional sustainability, social justice, participation, etc. So that, uh, that what does it mean? It means that when we are talking about sustainable development, it should be simultaneously maintain the the uh, the three important. The, uh, that sustainability of three important system that is biological, economic, and social system. So this definition correctly point out that sustainable development is a multi-dimensional concept. But in the same time, uh, this multi uh, implementing this uh, multi-dimensional concept or idea of sustainable development is very difficult because if you look uh, from economic point of view you will see that uh, that the cause and the benefit of economics are uh, incommensurable because when the when uh, we discuss about when there is a, another which uh, we have to understand that when neoclassical economics said that the cause and the benefit of economic growth are commensurable but now when we realize the issues of that that when you understand and the uh, economic growth is an open system, then, uh, then we understand the relation between the economic growth and the environment and quality, then it cannot be commensurable, it is incommensurable. And on the other side, one we can say that when you are talking about that, we have to uh, maintain the environment and quality, that also cannot work. So ecology is in the same time, what we said that, only economic growth will not be able to sustain the society in the same way only ecology cannot explain the or maintain the sustainability. For example, if you look into that the concept of carrying capacity concept, the enormous difference in the use of materials and energy among different people and territories, you will find out. You cannot say that carrying capacity can be an indicator, only indicator to look into sustainability, to look into the development and uh, uh, to look into the progress of development. Because when you look, especially if you look into the way people are using the resources, it is different from one region to another, another region. And uh, moreover, geographical distribution is dist determined historically, not biologically. Because the point is that when you talk about global um, geographic geographical distribution is dist determined historically, not biologically, the point is that when you use concept of carrying capacity, you may be, or we may be generalizing that one person can be equivalent, this much is given, this much, and all this much resources consumption per unit time or per unit area. But it, you know, this you cannot look biologically, right? It depends on bi uh, the geographical location, right? So, uh, so we need to, uh, so we need to uh, understand and that, uh, that uh, main feature of sustainable development, right? First is an important characteristic of, uh, uh, is the, of this particular uh, feature of sustainable development is the issues of distributional equity. What we are talking about is special difference in everything, but within this in generation and uh, between different generation. So we need to understand the distributional equity. When we're talking about resources, then when you are talking about economic growth, when you are talking about uh, development, that look into distributional equity. Second, an economic ecological integration is needed 
above all in terms of resource in pollution emission. Because when you talk about the economic growth also, how efficient you are using resources, that needs to be understand. And, uh, and uh, how much pollution you are created out of that? And uh, what is the value of that? The point is that you have to understand integration of the economic and ecological value, right? So this is the uh, two basic features of sustainable development to understand. Then the next question comes, <clears throat> Sustainable development of whom? We're talking about sustainable development of whom? Because when you talk about economic growth, when you are talking about economic sustainability as, a, as a one of the component of uh, sustainable development, you will see that all consumer wants to consume, uh, want consumption system. If consumption system, okay, uh, it will be good. In the same way, you know, workers want to sustain. Right, so then in the same way, if you look into capitalists and socialists, capitalist people like capitalism, socialist people like socialism, like way aristocrat, they will talk about aristocracy and technocracy. They will talk about their own system. But if you look into all these conflict, environment and management, what we're talking about, one of the important approach to sustainable development or economic a growth is effectively conflict, very, it's a matter of conflict. So conflict analysis is one of, uh, is important, which is characterized by technical, socioeconomic, environmental, political values adjustment. The point is we have to understand all those conflicts, why all those conflicts are. Because every society, every what we are talking about, consumers, worker, capitalists, socialists, aristocrats, technocrats, decision makers, they will interpret in their own way. So that makes a conflict to understand that, uh, to interpret in their own way. So in the same time, when we talk about that, uh, uh, that's why we need to have a, I mean, uh, that, uh, that will effective management of in, uh, environment. And then if you look into ecological distribution, what we are talking about uh, that ecological uh, that uh, one minute ecological distribution. Yeah. So when you talk about ecological distribution, here we talk about the, that particular technical, socioeconomic, environment, political value journey, right? Environment in plan, uh, that environment and management is effectively conflict analysis. All these things. So when we talk about ecological distribution, let us take a look into that. The social, special, temporary asymmetry of inequality in the use of humans of environmental resources and services. So this is how, you know, what it means is that now the distribution of ecological values, distribution of ecological characteristics, they are different. And uh, if you look at socially also, especially also, their asymmetry, temporarily also asymmetry from one generation to another generation, then, then, for example, let us, let us look into socio-ecological distribution. When there is pollution, right? For example, you establish a, I mean, a factory. Then, then and the pollution waste that is coming from that area, then we throw it, we make the landfill site, landfill site to a place that may be in peri-urban area, that may be in rural area, where downtrodden section of the society live. That is one of the phenomena, and it was very common in 1970s, 80s in the US is the environment and their defiance and the environment and the racism. They used to throw those hazardous worst ways. They, I mean, uh, const, uh, they uh, is, um, uh, develop this kind, that, that kind of infrastructure in the place where that, uh, that uh, black people settle. Then another is special ecological distribution. Whenever we talk about uh, uh, the environment and pollution, then like acid rain, then uh, about uh, that uh, uh, the, uh, air pollution, water pollution, it can spread vertically. The another is temporal ecological distribution. 
For example, today, uh, when you say that we are using nuclear energy for production of energy, we are very efficient and uh, least environment. And if you do not look into uncertain, uncertainty of that uh, the impact, uncertainty of the negative impact, if you look into from environmental point of view, sometimes we said that it is safer. Uh, it, is, uh, it has uh, not much higher environmental impact, but the waste, radioactive waste, which is the product of, as a byproduct of that particular thermal plow plant or for that particular nuclear energy for plant, then that will be in the environment. Then the next generation, whether they are going to be, and uh, that uh, they are going to tag uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, they are going to tag those resources, the impact of those the uh, resources that will be get by the next generation. So we have to understand all these characteristics. So let us try to look into uh, that issues of these complicated issues. Sometimes we uh, we said that conflict of issues of sustainable development. If you look from ecological point of view also, from economic point of view also, from the lenses of environment economics and ecological economics. On one side, we want, uh, what we can say, how environment and economics and ecological economics look the issues of sustainable development. When we talk about environment and economics, sometimes we call as neoclassical economics. They follow uh, two important fundamental questions to understand the environmental uh, resources. One is the problem of environmental externalities. The other is the correct management of natural resources particularly optimal intergenerational allocation of non-renewable resources. The assumption is that if you look from a post epistemological uh, point of view, the assumption is that complete monetary commensurability is there that we talk about. Like, then what they are saying that technology bring the progress. And uh, if there is good technology, then everything will be possible to handle. If there is pollution, pollution can be tackled by technology, then economic growth will be there. If there is economic growth, one or other technology will come up, then we'll, uh, we'll be able to limit up that uh, negative impact of uh, those uh, process of development, economic growth. And on the other hand, sometimes they talk about the substitution of more productive management capital for natural capital. Instead, if there is the uh, resource crunch or some resources that we will have because of the growth of human knowledge, advancement of human knowledge, we can have more technology, efficient technology that can substitute the, uh, the that, uh, natural resources, right? So the point is that the environment and economics though that, uh, that neoclassical economics is a, uh, Follow its perf uh, is the, uh, that follow the principle of weak sustainability concept that looks uh, towards uh, economic growth only, right? Because environment in issues and environment and problems that can be tackled by pro uh, that uh, substitution factor of substitution and uh, that will be uh, I mean uh, solved by uh, growth of technology. That is, and in some we can say. Uh, that is uh, their principle is perfect substitutability principle. That is how environment and economics, the neoclassical economic, consider, I mean, looks the question of sustainability when we are talking about this uh, sustainable deployment, right? So the point is we need to, we need to maintain the natural capital stock uh, the region is the role which natural environment play in supporting sustainable economic system is covered by some scientific uncertainty. This is what neoclassical, uh, uh, that uh, neoclassical theory is also proposing. Because when we talk about uh, uh, that, uh, that particular, uh, that uh, uh, substituability, what they are also talking about natural capital stock is uh, this it also needs to be maintained, right? Since uncertainty exists about the way in which environment function, either internally or in terms of their interaction with economy, a threat of, uh, of 
the benefit of substitu substituting man-made capital for natural capital is not a realistic one. The point is that when we said that, when they said that there is substitution theory, but the point is that whatever the natural way of that natural processes it cannot be substituted by the man-made capital, right? So moreover, the point is most environmental decisions are characterized by irreversibility. If a mistake is made, it is not possible to correct. If it utter, uh, it afterwards, once pollution is there, if you release the pollution, and you cannot say that technology will take care, because the process of that natural process cannot be irreversible. It will take longer time. That is the why uh, we. Uh, that is why the concept. That is how the concept of ecological economics comes up. This ecological economics, the principle of econo ecological economics talks about linkages between ecosystem and economic system. That's we are talking about when you understand or pricing a material, when you understand the process of production, you have to understand what is the impact to the environment? What is that value? And it explicitly refuses, uh, refuses the complete commensurability uh, paradigm what neoclassical economists propose and uh, recognize the existence of incommensurability between economic and environmental aspects. The point is that you cannot say that only, only economic progress has to be maintained to have a good environment, to, have, uh, to maintain uh, a uh, good quality of environment. In the same way, you cannot say that ecology can, has to be set for sustaining our system. So the, this is the, what ecological economics propose. So ecological, we know that number of issues are happening and we have repeatedly discusses about that when we discuss about natural resources, when we discuss about sociocultural issues. So, and uh, today we understand that how neoclassical economics interpret the way of economic growth and uh, what ecological economics wants to do that. So ecological economics, is a new area, but now it is no more a new area. Uh, it when it was first, I mean the first uh, the concept was conceptualized and uh, it was newly I mean div, uh, grown in that in 1980s that it was a new field of study that addresses the relationship between ecosystem and economic system in the broader sense. So ecological economics differs from the conventional economics and conventional ecology in terms of bread of its perception of the problem, the important needs attached to environment economic interaction. The point is that ecological economics looks into interaction between environment and economy, right? This is a difference with, from uh, that point of, uh, that from neoclassical economies and from hardcore ecologists. So it goes in between that uh, they try to understand and the interaction between ecology and economy. So to understand that the principle of ecological economics, we can look into uh, uh, from the lens of now how it was happened during 1980s, 1970s, 80s, 90s, and onward. One important is the post-normal science. You know, what is post-normal science? The puzzle solving exercise of normal science, you know, which we are so successfully extended from the laboratory of core science to the conquest of nature through applied science. We used to, I mean, we use the science to extract the resources. That is what we're talking about in the beginning of our session that was in the first course, we talk about uh, science of development. To develop the science, that is the, when we talk about, uh, when we are talking about sustainable science, different phase of Growth of science, we talk about that. So, so we entirely depend on the, the, uh, the science. So in the post-normal science, it is no longer appropriate for the solution of environmental problems because with deeper science, you no, know, they are very uncertain. And if we look to, we are talking about conflict, value conflicts is also exist here, right? Value conflicts is also there in the same way, 
this ecological economics that is why ecological economy recognize the presence importance and legitimacy of different value commitments for the appropriate management of the uncertainty where we have seen when we are trying to uh, have that scientific knowledge uh, for our development on the other way uh, on in the same time this uh, in this post normal science the ecological economy uh, does not claim ethical neutrality, nor an, uh, nor an indifference to the policy consequence of its argument, right? So in the same way, in that time, one of the important uh, area of ecological uh, economics is with, uh, with the coming of that post-normal science is understanding that institutional economics that focuses on actors, their worldviews, means different actors, means uh, stakeholders worldviews, habits, extra, and on institutional arrangements of uh, to organizations, uh, rules of game, poor relationship, and then entitlement, other types of uh, you know, uh, uh, control over resources. So, so this, uh, uh, this institutional economics recognize uh, the impossibility of a value-free science impasses on the importance of distribution of property right and a strong criticism of monetary reduction age. That means this talks about principal equity and equality. Then another uh, uh, point, what, how we have to look at ecological economics itself, a co-evolutionary paradigm. We can look from co-evolutionary paradigm see. When you talk about economic development, and an economic development can be viewed as a process of adaptation to a changing environment, while itself being a source of environment and change. But when you talk about, uh, I mean, there's co-evolve, that interaction between environment and people as a co-involved and social system, environment system, co as a co-evolve, it should not be looked in a unidirectional way. So the principle of Co uh, this co-evolutionary paradigm, institutional economics, post-normal science reinforces one another. When you talk about co-evolutionary age, you know that how human civilization started. That is an example of co-evolution. If you look from industrial revolution again, how we utilize the resources, that's a kind of co-evolution. We evolve together so in the same way then we have to, un when we talk about sustainability, we have to understand the principle of co-evolution. When you talk about co-evolution from the point of biology, also species co-evolve together, right? So in that process of co-evolution, we must try to limit the impact to the environment. We have to evolve together with other species. We also now know that when you talk about the issues of uh, the, uh, the economic development and so on, they talk about value of conflicts and uh, democratization of science and uncertainty, right? So in this post-normal science institution in economics, this particular uh, that the process, they emphasize the importance of what we are talking very important is income and suitability and decision-making processes. So you cannot say that only one parameters can take care. So we have to understand the different aspects. So this co-evolution underlines the importance of economy, environment, interactions. And what is economy, environment, interaction? The details are in your study material. I will not go in details, but if we have a quick look into uh, this uh, ecology, environment, interaction, First, we will find out the uh, issues of a scale. When you talk about issues of a scale, the simple logic is from your, you know, different scale from individual to society and society to, you know, that, and to nation, nations to, you know, and that uh, global system. So this can be looked into three important systems. One is your economic system, the third, is the third one is nature system. The economic system, you will see the economic activities of man, such as your production capability, actions and consumption is an economic system. When there is scarcity phenomenon, then, then we have to talk about the efficiency, effective use of 
efficient use of resources. That's talk about economic system. When you talk about the human system from the lens of economy environment interaction, it comprises all activities of human beings on our planet, it includes you know, what we talk about when uh, that values again, human elements, it's inspiration, aesthetic value, this morality that constitute a frame of human life. That's also we discussed when we, in the beginning of our discourse, right? So from that, it's clear that if you look into human ecosystem, human system, economic system does not constitute the entire human system. We can assume that the economic system is a subsystem of the human system. You can note down then when we talk about interaction between nation and society, then society created a medium called economy to interact with the nature. So economic system should be taken as a subsystem of human system. And a natural system, when again natural system should include, when you talk of natural system, we could should include both human system and the economic system. That's and this fundamental principle also, when we talk about our different models, we talk about relation between nature human system and when we talk about eco model. So this is how you have to understand economy and uh, that uh, relation. So when uh, then, when you understand that from the point of a scale, you know what is a scale? Scale the physical scale or size of the human presence in the ecosystem is measured by population time per capita per use. Is it possible? No, it is not possible. It is also very, uh, I mean, conflict, a number of conflicts there. What we are talking a few minutes back about that spatio-temporal differences. Our assumption is that when economy grows, that, that, that you know, uh, that scale is increases. When you have grows the economy, you started to sell the product across the world. There should be a maximum, maximum limit of that. That should take care of regenerative or absorptive capacity of the ecosystem. So from environment, the point is that that environment economy, then ecological uh, that uh, uh, linkages that support is strong sustainability then comes, comes, you can look that environment economy linkages from the law of entropy and economic processes. Laws of thermodynamic, what talk, uh, talks about the first law of thermo, uh, thermodynamic, energy neither be created nor destroyed. In the same way, you can look the second law of thermodynamic, thermo, uh, that uh, thermodynamic law of uh, heat, then third law, the entropy, that's already, that is in uh, our, uh, this uh, study material, I will not explain on that. You will be able to understand very easily. So this figure illustrates the ecological economic conception of economic system as a part of overall ecosystem. You will see from here, you will be able to understand very easily, right? So the point is what uh, we understand is that Values are always inherent, interdisciplinary, transdisciplinary are key principle. When you talk about the values, economics do what? Economics the values, they are interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinary, means multidimensional, you understand. Then co-evolution and diversity are the key issues of sustainability, right? Because uh, we co-evolve. When I talk about the growth of human civilization, we evolve with other species and that there are a number of diversity Spatio temporal differences is here. Then this is how when we evolve, co evolve also, that in that way uh, we created uh, another uh, that situation or consequences called environment integrator. These are that is why co evolution and diversity in one side, in, uh, in the same time, they are also the major issues of sustainability. Then incommensurability, multidimensionality, weak comparability, uh, that uh, they are key guiding principle. So then you no know, strong sustainability in operationalized by means of biophysical indicator. We have to understand in strong sustainability, what is strong sustainability, what we are talking about. Uh, we, we should not talk about 
commensurability, we do have to talk about incommensurability, multidimensionality. So ecological economy recognize that ecological economic rationality are not sufficient to lead to correct decision. Thus, environmental decision must be taken by using a democratic scientific political decision processes. This is how ecological economics understand uh, the concept of sustainability with this, I, you know, you can look into these differences, uh, you can write, uh, you can read this, then you will be able to explain more uh, and understand more what I am trying to uh, uh, pass this to you. So uh, now the session is uh, 